Hello and welcome to another Funaga Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be following on from the previous tutorial and take it a step further. Um, in the previous tutorial we looked at aligning sound um, from an external device using a clapperboard system to the video clips. You're all losers. And now we're going to be taking that a step further and taking a look at how we go from having these uh, synchronized sound clips to creating a fully fledged sound design. Um, now in this tutorial we're not going to go into something majorly sophisticated based on the fact that the first 90% of editing always is the quickest and then the last 10% generally takes longer because you're tweaking and refining constantly until you're perfectly happy with everything and sometimes you're not perfectly happy with everything um, but everything has a release date. Um, real, art, real artists ship, right? So in our sound folder or keyword collection, this clip here, uh, which I know um, because I was told very simply, um, or these two clips, you can see we've got a one and a two of the same clip uh, that both recorded at the same time. One is a left channel, one is a right channel. Um, they are the Atmos sound for this environment. Now, this is a very important audio file because you can hear well, Mr. Nigel Wigel. There is some significant background noise going on, uh, simply because if we take a look at the wide shot, there's actually a river here uh, that's flowing, and obviously stuff like that is, is a nightmare. So luckily for us, um, or not luckily, um, it was planned. We have an audio file um, that, if we listen to it briefly, is the sound of the river. And we use this to build up a background plate of the sound, um, a bit like how you would have a background visual plate before you then add visual effect elements, maybe like lens flares and such. But by the way, the lens flares in this film are real. There's there's no like fancy um, fake ones. Um, so if we select these two channels and press synchronize clips, and then go up to the master folder, and you can see this is our synchronized clip, we're going to um, rename it and we're going to call it Atmos River Sound and uh, what we're going to do is add it to the uh, shoot day one sound because that's actually when the, uh, that's not when it was recorded but it's uh, it's where it belongs in sense of um, that's the that's when we recorded the scenes. Then what we're going to do is uh, bring it down into our timeline or into our storyline, sorry. And you can see that it's far too long. And we've also got the sound recorder's voice here. So we just hold our ponies a second and set an in and out point to this area. We can see visually speaking that this area is fairly flat. There's no spikes, which could be caused by a number of things. We just want the uh, the very basic uh, flat background sound. You can see, based on this image as well, we've got a bit of a, uh, a head and a bit of a tail we can dig into as well. Now, before I... Um, start working on it, what I'm going to do is double click on this compound clip and make sure that the audio channels are aligned so make sure you've got your inspector showing and I know that the track 1 is the left channel and track 2 is the right channel because of how the, this uh, was recorded um, through some kind of sophisticated XLR system um, I'm not a sound recordist um, but it works you can hear that as we cut to this clip then the uh, the background sound from this clip just tears through and is far too uh, strong. So what we need to try and do is find a way of removing some of this background sound so that it blends into this background sound. Now, one of the first things we can do is just increase the volume of our Atmos sound, um, which is going to allow us to more easily hide the, uh, the transitions. Now, there's, there's two main ways to do it, in my opinion. There's lots of ways. You can have a long tail on your dialogue clip and fade it out over a long period of time to make the transition less noticeable 
Or you can create a hard ending after the uh, dialogue. And both of them, you can see, work pretty effectively. I'm going to use the short tail system um, for the moment. And you can see that's sounding and looking pretty good. Now, obviously, when the scene goes on for longer, we know that for the most part, we don't actually have that much more to go um, on this Atmos track. So what we can do is, if we zoom out and hold down the uh, Option key, or the Alt key if you're in England, um, and then drag this clip, you can see we've created a second one. And now if we grab these handles and create a crossfade, like such, and then we can, um, once we've got enough of these for the duration of the scene, we can then create a compound clip just to neaten things up. And then if we go into the inspector panel and click on the info tab, we can rename this compound clip Atmos Sound. And now that when it's in the timeline, we can very easily see what this audio track is. Um, which is a good way to say organize. You don't really need to do that for video clips, um, generally speaking, because you can visually determine what they are. Now let's just take a listen to this scene. Losers. Magnificent. So now we've got a nice sounding backdrop with the dialogue that doesn't attack the um, the audience, but we've now got a sense of a, a soundscape that is believable. Um, if we get rid of this Atmos sound by just pressing the V key to disable the track, you can see that there's actually hard edges on that. But with the Atmos sound that actually matches the ambience, it's indistinguishable. So it literally just sounds like it was a single audio take for the whole clip. Magic. So where can we go from here? Now, you notice that there's a few other little things within the scene. For instance, Nigel, the character um, played by William Fisher, turns on his feet here. Now, what we don't have, but um, there will be somewhere here, is the sound of feet on concrete. So you can then layer in a sound of that. There's probably a recording of that. Um, in fact, if we find the take for here, um, by using our earlier technique, uh, technique of Shift F, you can see that we've got to take, but the chances are that the microphones wouldn't have been close enough to pick up the sound, so that's where something like ADR or Foley sounds come in. And what I mean by that is someone goes off with just a microphone and records um, some feet in similar shoes on some concrete ground and then you layer that in as if that was the original sound. Um, but he also shuffles very quietly, so Obviously, what the uh, professional microphones offer you is um, is that you get rid of all the wind noise. You can see that in these dialogue clips, you're, you're there's no wind noise at all, and that's because they, they're all um, covered in the massive um, um, dead, dead cats um, and wind protectors and windshields. So you won't get that on the... Uh, actual audio file, however chances are because he's so far away we're not going to have picked up the sound so that's where we want to bring in a Foley artist um, and that's what you can do to layer in some of the um, sound effects so what we can also do to build this up is add some uh, sound design and what I mean by that is stuff like uh, drum beats etc so if we call up finder um, and go into a folder called Video Copilot. We can see we've got some pro scores. 
we've got some mammoth hits here. And you can just go through these and see what you're looking for. And we can actually drag these straight from Finder into the Final Cut Pro timeline. And what we want to do is add in an impact to show the severity of the situation from the moment Nigel says you're all losers by confronting these bullies. So what we're going to do is wait for the uh, key moment. So we select this video clip. You're all losers. You're all losers. So what we want to do is when we start seeing his hands. Um, so I put in a marker there, uh, just as a rough starting point, by pressing the M key whilst playing. You're all losers. You're all losers. And there we go, we've now added a slight impact. Now that's probably not the right sound effect to use, but you can start to see how we can add small design elements to build up the scene um, and create the desired uh, response from the audience. Hi, Joe. You're all losers. What we can also do is add uh, an atmosphere from the Pro Scores folder. And you can see that just very quickly creates a, um, an atmosphere that conveys an emotion um, to create an emotional response. So if we now thread in this, you can start to see that very quickly with just a couple of audio tracks we've created a realistic soundscape in terms of realism, um, diegetic sound which is sound that the characters would be able to hear um, and then we've added just a couple of non-diegetic sounds uh, which are sounds that the characters can't hear because they're, they're filmic sounds that are outside of the, uh, the world of the film such as music and scores and dramatic impacts. So now if we play this back And there you go, like that, it's now starting to um, to work pretty well. Uh, one thing I do want to do though is um, bring this in because I like it where the uh, the volume goes up there, the, the pitch changes. So what I want to do is that there's a little sound here. I want that to come just after the mammoth hit. So I'm going to press a marker, uh, M for marker, and try and align that. And now we're just going to add in a slight crossfade. And like that, we've now created a very filmic sounding film uh, with good quality audio, well managed Atmos sound, dialogue sound, and some basic sound design elements. So, um, hopefully, this was useful uh, to you so you can go about um, building some great uh, sound designs or soundscapes uh, for your films. Um, now, sometimes obviously you don't want these sound design elements, but the, they add to the, um, they help create the response that you are uh, attempting to create, uh, which is always useful. And Pro Scores, as shown, is a very good place to start because they've got lots of um, great sound effects. I'm not paid to show you this, by the way. Um, I just really recommend it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will um, see you guys soon with some brand new tutorials. Oh, and the film is uh, called The Ali Complex, which is out on the 12th of July on uh, Virgin Media Shorts, so make sure you go and check it out. And um, and if you watch it on the Virgin Media Shorts page, then please, please, please uh, press one of the share buttons on Facebook or Twitter um, so we can try and go for the People's Choice Award. Um, and I'd really, really appreciate that. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.